So first thing I did here is I took the top mic and split it into two tracks. You could easily send this to a separate bus, but I just made it two tracks. One mic was out of phase, so I just brought up a, uh, under utility, there's a gain plugin right there. And just click invert phase and that'll flip it 180 degrees. Open an FFT plugin. There's the fundamental of your snare. So that's the sh your snare's note, what it's tuned to, 212. And then these peaks here, 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 those are all ringing harmonics that, that like ping, ping, ping. I'm gonna open up an EQ. And then all of these peaks, I plug those into here so I can control their amplitude. That'll dry out the, s the snare, take that ring out of it. I have the noise gate and you can see it blip when it turns on. The attack is set to zero so that it comes in right away. Um, have a little bit of look ahead so it doesn't mess up the attack. And then the hold, we really just want to hold it for the attack and a little bit of the body and then we want it to cut out before uh, the s snare s uh, sustain fades down lower than the cymbal bleed. So I set it to 30 milliseconds. You could probably go a little shorter, a little longer, that's fine. And the release is just to smooth it out. And then I set the uh, the high cut and the low cut, depending on what we saw here in our FFT. This right here shows you how much it reduces it. I don't want to cut it all the way down to zero because that might sound weird. So it's, I have it at 18. And then you just want to set the threshold until you're just getting the attack of the snare. Um, that comes in, that, that runs into issues with things like uh, ghost notes because obviously they're a lot lower and they're actually quieter than the cymbal bleed in the snare mic. That takes care of our main snare mic. Now we're going to look at the double. Same thing, we have the uh, phase inverted here. Then we we use a linear EQ because it's not going to smear the, the phase all up. Um, and we're just going to cut the lows under here. That's going to be all kick bleed. Um, cut some of the, the cymbal hash right here and then cut the high highs, which is all going to be cymbals anyway. Then we run it into our noise gate that we just looked at. Out of the noise gate, we run it into the EQ where we've punched all the holes for our ringing sound. From there, I run it into another EQ that's a little bit tighter, so I set that right below the attack and right above the highest relevant frequencies for the, the snare. We're gonna have high end in our bottom mic anyway, so we don't need all of that. Then we compress it pretty hard. So you can see how hard we're compressing it there, probably like 12 decibels or so. And we wanna make this as much like a switch as possible just to bring the out. We don't want any of the body in this track. So the ratio is gonna be pretty high. It's basically a limiter. So, and I mean, anything above a threshold, we wanna bring that down until we get enough of the blip that it's punching through, but not so much that it squashes everything else. The knee I set all the way to hard. Um, attack, we wanna let enough of the attack through. So you'll just have to listen to that. It's probably gonna be between like five and 20. So I, I settled on like 10 or so. And release, we want that as, as quick as possible. This only goes down to five milliseconds, so that's where we're gonna set it. Um, no makeup gain, auto gain off, uh, auto release off. I have the limiter set on. So that's just gonna blip on some of the, some of the highest peaks there. And then I have a hard clip as well. Um, I did a little bit of uh, parallel compressing here. So added in some of the input signal, but it's mostly gonna be the it's mostly going to be the compressed signal. That goes through to a transient shaper. This transient shaper is a plugin that I made. Um, there are commercial versions, but uh, I'm broke, so I made my own. And all that lets you do is make the attack more punchy and cut the sustain down. So instead of going pa pa pa, if you turn this down, it goes like pa 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 pa. And then the uh, rest of this doesn't really matter. Uh, the smoothness is just a low pass filter on the gate um, to round off the attack a little bit. So I have it set pretty choppy on this track. And then I, I added a clipper here at the end just to clip the transient peaks. So I just set that down a little bit just to clip off the top. Um, next thing is a gated reverb. So you want a really, a really dense gated um, like small room or small chamber type thing. You can see this is a 300 millisecond reverb and I have the envelope set pretty abrupt and then blend that in and 
stick around with the decay until you're just getting um, more body. So instead of our like pop, 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 we're gonna go like poop, poop, poop. Um, and we're doing that in parallel. So dick around with the reverb level until it's not, it doesn't sound, it's enough that it thickens it up, but it doesn't sound weird. Then next in line, we want a limiter. I just used loud max because uh, I had it on my system since I showed you that. And then set it down so it's cutting like three decibels off the top or something. So you see that popping down there and that'll just keep our, keep our signal nice and level. And then I popped it into an exciter. It has a crossover and then it clips everything above the frequency point and adds upper harmonics to it. So that's going to add high end to, to just our parallel track and then you can mix it in. So I have it about, you know, one fifth and then I have this set right above where um, we had cut out in our EQ. Um, so what that's going to do, I, I cut all everything above like 2K out before so that we wouldn't have our cymbal mess in there and then I'm just adding those frequencies back in and this is just going to be harmonics of the the fundamental right here so that's the parallel track then we have the you can see I have the, the the bottom mic about the same level as the the top mic but I EQ'd it so that we're just using the high end so again here's this magical changeover point right here above 2k where I'm just cutting all the body out and I'm just using this stuff up at the top and that's just all gonna be strainer rattle. So I can mix that in depending on how much we want. Again, I punched holes in it to get the ringing out and then used another transient shaper. This with the attack set much steeper and the sustain cut down a little bit, no clipping. So all three of these tracks I sent out to a bus Box, bus one, aux one, it's gonna be this right here. And that mixes all three of these together and then lets us control their level with each other so that we can blend it in with the rest of the, the, rest of the mics. And I have our EQ that we punched holes in again here so we can mess with the level some more. Um, I have that cut out pretty hard because there's a lot of ringing in the overhead mics. Uh, so I want that out of there plus after we compressed the the crap out of it and hit it with our our limiter and all that stuff it brings them ringing back up again so we need to cut that out again this is the basic eq of our snare again i cut out some of the cymbal schmutz here and some of the cymbal schmutz here up at the top give a little bit of a boost here and then a gradual cut at the bottom that goes into our parallel compression this is going to press, compress the overall level of everything before it gets to the reverb. So I have it set to knock about 9 decibels off uh, with a pretty hard ratio. So I have the mix about one third direct signal. I also am clipping the top end off of it and I have a limiter on it too. So that'll just blip on at the hardest parts and you have to adjust that to, to what you want. Then we use another transient shaper on the whole thing. Um, this time just to cut the sustain a little bit and add a little bit of attack so that's going to bring out the attack some more on the overall and then we're cutting out the ringing which is going to make it more more punchy um, a lot of the body is going to be made up in the reverb and in the overhead mics so uh, we're just cutting that sustain here before it hits our final reverb the, you know the wet just mess with it until it's wet enough that you're happy with it uh, I did set some pre delay here so we're letting 20 milliseconds of the attack through before the reverb kicks in and then I EQ'd the the reverb part of it pr pretty heavily um, to cut the low end out and then to cut the high end out because otherwise it's going to sound too 80s if I leave a lot of the high end and if I leave too much of the low end it's going to be like boom like a big cannon and we don't want that we just want it a little bit wet so that it doesn't sound very demo-y and that's all. So mix it in with the rest of the mics. Uh, I did a mix down of the raw track and then the track with, or the, the raw drum mics and then the drum mics with all this stuff done to it, just so you could see the difference.